And welcome, welcome, welcome to Let's Talk Houston. I am your host, Dr. J. Lynn Hicks. And in the studio with us today, we have the lovely Rebecca Durden Swindle with us. Greet your people, Rebecca. Hey, everybody. Good evening. And she is such a phenomenal woman. She hails from the state of West Virginia. She is a wife, a mother of twin boys. She is a technology executive. She is an entrepreneur and the founder and CEO of PLK 1848 Ice Cream. Yes. It is a premium, an ultra premium ice cream brand, correct? Correct. Yes. Correct. And PLK stands for Petra Lee's Kitchen. Yes. So come on in, come on in, come on in the room as you're joining. Um, she might want to tell you a few things about herself. Click like, click share, tag a friend, tell a friend, because sharing is caring. So yes. what interesting unknown fact do you have to say about yourself, Miss Swindle? Well, the fact that I'm from West Virginia is probably the yeah. most interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, that is very interesting. Because very, very few people uh, that I meet in Texas have said they've ever met someone who's black from West Virginia. <laughs> so that would be the most interesting yes. fact for, for, for Houston, Texas. Yes, I would have to agree. Well, I'm so glad you made your way here. Yes, I am too. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. It's such a privilege. You're such a wonderful person. I mean, I, I have already fallen in love with you. You have such a beautiful spirit. Thank you. You're very easy to talk to and highly highly intelligent. You. So you're going to make my job so much easier because, you know, it's not a struggle or a strain. It's just, it's just easy. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I, this is an awesome opportunity for me to be here to talking with you this evening and to talk about my passion and my brand. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. So again, click like, click share. In fact, let me log on. I like to practice what I preach. I'm telling you all to click like, click share. Let me do that and see if I'm on myself. Where am I? Let's see here. Am I on? Oh, there I am. There, there we are. are. There you are. Ah, we can uh, see. We can see each other <laughs> talking to each other. Yes, <laughs> we can see each other talking. That Multiple is so, screens. so, so very true. Well, you know, I have no problem talking about food. All right. Uh, food is my passion. You're a foodie. I'm a foodie. All right. And then, also, sweets. Are my passion. Well, you know, when I have dinner <laughs> at a restaurant, yes, I choose what I'm going to have for dinner based on what's on the dessert menu. Right. Which is why I started my company <laughs> yes. at the dessert side of the menu because yes. uh, I have a sweet tooth as well. Yes, I'm right there with you. I am right there with you because, like, you know, when they talk about comfort food, yes, I think they try to find fault with it, but I have no problem with comfort food because to me comfort food simply brings back fun memories memories of comfort food is love where i'm from yes and i was raised in a family of people who could cook mm -hmm. um beginning with my grandmother and certainly her mother and her uh grandmother my grandmother was a grandma's girl i'm a grandma's yes. girl yes and so every one of us uh was trained uh and grew up eating really really delicious food from mrs Durden's kitchen wow so uh, for me, being a grandma's girl, I was always with her wherever she went. And I did not know uh, until I started this business, really, how much I had learned just through osmosis, just being in her presence mm -hmm. and eating her food and understanding how to not only to cook, but also how to present and how to prepare. And so I am eternally grateful for all of that free free teaching. And um, it's a it's a love thing for me. It's yes. comforting. It's it's love. And, mm. you know, where I'm from, we give food away. Yes. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> It was my husband who said, okay, you've got to stop giving everything away. You've taken, <laughs> I've taken over the entire kitchen with, yes. my, with my business and, and my children were trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to make ourselves breakfast and how are we going to, mm -hmm. I've taken it over. He says, okay, this is no longer a hobby. Mm -hmm. You've got to do something with this. And so I did. Well, you know, I'm so glad you did. You let your, you pursued your, your passion. Yes, ma'am. It was yeah. a passion. Absolutely. But they say, if you pursue your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. And I don't feel like it's work for me, although no. the food industry is a lot of work. Preparing mm -hmm. food is a lot of work and there are a lot of rules and regulations and you've got to follow follow a, a steps very specifically. Mm -hmm. But it, for me, that's the joy of cooking. It is my happy place. Yes, It is where I am uh, most at peace and I could do it for hours and have done it for hours. I have cooked for my family and been in the kitchen all day mm. uh, and, and, and not missed a beat. So for me, it is joy. Uh, I happened, I found a product that I truly believe in and love simply mm. because it is, it is childlike in its, in its experience. And it's uh, also something that will 
take you to someplace you've been before yes. or take you to someplace new and that's ice cream. And so for me, uh, this couldn't be a better way to reinvent myself. Yes. So as I listen to you and as you express your, your love and your genuine passion for this ice cream delicacy here, it sounds to me like this was a very important part of your childhood. Yes. <clears throat> Pardon me. It was a very important memory in, in, uh, for our childhood because mm -hmm. when my grandmother would make ice cream, it would take all day. Mm -hmm. And she had a very simple recipe, but she took her time with it. And we would all literally wait for our turn to churn mm -hmm. the uh, old crank wooden mm -hmm. ice cream churner that yes. we all grew up and had on our back <clears throat> porches where I'm from. Yes. But we could not wait to get our turn to churn it because that meant you could you got to have some ice cream. And so we mm -hmm. would we would churn and churn until it was partially frozen because it never really got frozen, but mm. it was cold enough. Yes. And uh and it was a sweet memory for me. We we looked forward to it because every when she did it, she made a big deal out of it and it was a very special occasion. Yes. And you. I never forgot that. And so those recipes uh I have I have have access to and and I and I have have cooked them and prepared mm -hmm. them again for my children and for my family. Um, and they're really a treasure. And so I, I, I was given the gift. So I thought I should, by the time I use it. Yes. So, you know, when I was reading your bio mm -hmm. and I was on your, your website uh, for your brand, the PLK 1848. Mm -hmm. And when you mentioned the uh, background of the vanilla ice cream mm -hmm. with the slave, uh, Edmund, Albius. Albius. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it was quite a shock to hear. I mean, first of all, the impact that a slave had on, I mean, the cultivation and the uh, the hand pollination of the vanilla bean, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And how I'm just saying, hundreds of years later, we are enjoying vanilla ice cream because of the contribution that mm -hmm. this slave who right. was, I'm going to say, omitted from history because I didn't hear a lot about him when I was <laughs> well in school. Correct. Most of us had not. And I know I had not. Mm. And so um, as I, I have spent the last two years R&Ding, researching and developing my product, yes. my recipes mm -hmm. and my brand. And in doing so, I, I'm a big reader. I'm a lifelong learner. And I, and I studied I, after I taught myself ice cream chemistry. Right. Uh, I started to focus on flavors. Yes. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so when I learned about Edmund Albius, it was an eye opener for me for me as well. Uh, it's because it is not recorded history that is recorded history, but it's history that we don't know about unless we have to go digging for it. Yeah. And uh, and so I, I I read about him and I, and I went digging for even more. And mm -hmm. um, what I learned was, you know, truly when when God put the vanilla orchid on the planet, he put it in Mexico. Mm. And of course, it was taken away by various groups of yes, people yes. during transatlantic uh, slave trade. And uh, the problem was they couldn't grow it outside of Mexico because they didn't have the right bee to pollinate it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when it got to the French colonies, um, Edmund, who was 12 years old at the time, was yes. working with the horticulturalists on, uh, on the plantation. Mm -hmm. uh, he hand pollinated it and he produced the first bean from the orchid outside yes. of Mexico. And of course, at that point, he's, you know, trotted around to teach everybody else on the mm -hmm. plantation mm -hmm. how to do it. Not just the plantation he was on, but many other uh, French colonies. Yeah. And so, but for that contribution from that 12 year old, I don't know what the uh, worldwide production of vanilla would look like today. Certainly hand pollinization is still taking place. Mm -hmm. But it's a huge contribution it is. to uh, to not only this, this culinary product, but to our history. And yes. so when I continued to dig deeper and learn more about our contributions to this product, mm -hmm. it was I was even more inspired. And I and I had to keep, I had to continue to keep going, and I had to really focus my brand on honoring those food ways, uh, not only of history but also of our culture. Uh, right. So for me, uh, the 1848 brand truly represents. Um, a full the fullness of the African diaspora and our food ways and our culinary history and the things that we brought to the table. Yes, there would not be for 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 but for what we have brought to the table. I mean, mm -hmm. we can start as simple as the sweet potato and the watermelon. Yes, and go all the way through uh, the Horn of Africa and into Central and South America. Mm -hmm. And there are food ways that that 
we brought to the table. And so I look at those and I say, well, gosh, how can I turn that into a really delicious ice cream product? Yeah, I wasn't for sure, but I did hear several years ago that we bought the, you know, we are the ones responsible for bringing that sweet potato and watermelon from Africa. Correct. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Yep. But uh, just, those are just two, two aspects. Of them. So, mm -hmm. so the inspiration is there, <clears throat> and we uh, call our company 1848 because that is the year that Edmund uh, Albius passed away. Yes. Uh, and he uh, obviously passed away without having been given any recognition. Now, today, you know, there's a statue mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Madagascar, and, and, and he's honored. He uh, however, uh, he did die penniless. And, you know, that's something that I don't I don't believe we should ever forget. And mm. so I make it a purpose to, to make sure that my brand never forgets. Right. So I want to sample. Yes, ma'am. That is your vanilla spoon. OK. So I have a rule. <laughs> If you eat ice cream, you should eat it with one spoon and you shouldn't put your, you put your vanilla spoon like in the strawberry or, you know, I, it's just an anal retentive thing for me, but okay. nevertheless, um, so that is our vintage vanilla but and it's all bean, no extract, all bean, no extract. And it's all of my ice creams are custard based. So there's eggs, there's um, mm. full fat milk, full fat cream, um, all beans. And with vanilla, it's my grandmother's recipe. So it uses all the milks. And my so God. when I say all the milks, it's uh -huh. organic, whole milk, heavy cream. It's uh, sweetened condensed milk and it's evaporated milk and it's cooked very slowly. Mm. So I steep the beans. Like there you is would. a God. <laughs> I steep I the mean, beans <laughs> like you would steep tea. I'm telling y'all, if you didn't believe, you, I'm telling you, you, you need to believe. Well, you can actually see the beans. You can see. Yeah, I can see them. In the product. Let's go back to the four milks. Yes. You said organic, organic whole, whole milk. milk. Organic I heard heavy you. cream. Heavy cream. Organic sweet and condensed milk. Sweet and condensed. And organic organic evaporated. Evaporated. Milk. My goodness. It makes for a richness and a decadence that you can only get uh in a premium ice cream. Yes. So most vanilla ice cream is either all milk or milk with some heavy cream. Yes. Um, this is a recipe that uses all the milks because I like that flavor of it being the richness. Uh, rich coat uh and also like a, almost a cooked flavor mm. so it's my grandmother's so you if you had a grandmother who made ice cream like mine did i think mm -hmm. you said i did i had an aunt you had an aunt who did that you can this is a product that will make you feel like Go you're back. back home again take me back i'm going back all you need is a slice <laughs> of pie or a slice of cake or mm -hmm. a couple of cookies peach cobbler peach cobbler i actually have a product i didn't bring that one though oh because she made that too the one that made the i have a mango peach cobbler do cream. you yes y'all listen uh, and the reason why mango and peaches, I have to say, is because they are two of the culture's most widely used stone fruits. Okay. And not just in the South mm -hmm. and in the Caribbean, uh, but also in Southern India. And um, and so when you think about a mango and you think about a peach, they're, they look beautiful. They do. And they taste really decadent, um, but they hold up very well in, a, in many of uh, 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 recipes. So because I know I like peach cobbler. I made a mango cobbler and uh, I paired it with my peach cobbler and hmm. I put it in my ice cream. Wow. I'm going to have to take this delicious. I'm moved. Have to that one here no, no, I'm sorry you don't, though. but that's okay. I, I'm going to get it. But you have three others. I don't. I see that. <laughs> and I, I, I feel good about that. I have a burning desire to, get, burning to, desire get, to get back to those. Yes. yes. I tell you, I'm moved to tears right now. The, the, the flavor is moving. I'm, I'm having an emotional response. Well, what does it remind you of? It reminds me of my childhood, and but see, the thing is, the people that were in my childhood are no longer with me. Mm -hmm. They have gone on mm -hmm. to higher ground, and so you're taking right. me back to the fun memories and the days when they were here and when we had the ice cream. And like you say, food and the sharing of food and the giving away of food, that's your love language. That was my family's love language. Yes. And so when I think of food and I think of good food and I think of ice mm -hmm. cream and I think of quality and I think of cooking and I would say, ain't glass this food is so good. What did you, you know, what do you put in? She would always say, you know, I, I cook with a lot of love. I put a lot of love. Right. And I believe that, it, you know, it's reminiscent it of translates. what your, yeah, what your grandmother. Absolutely. 100%. When, yeah. When you cook with love, you can taste it. It, it tastes different. Absolutely. And so that's the whole point. It took you to a place and here we are in Houston, Texas sitting yes. in, this, in this lovely studio, but mm. you had that ice cream and it took you to a place yeah. of pure joy and love. Yeah. And way that, back. That's the whole point. That's the reaction that I hope everyone has when they eat my ice cream. You know what I like? I like the level of quality and, and the ultra, uh, the ultraness of it all, or, you know, the classiness. 
because we talked about the ingredients. You do what? I focus on ingredients. Yes, I believe that. I believe that fresh is best. And I, I also use seasonal ingredients. So I don't cook with things that are out of season. Oh, okay. So right now it's summer season. So anything with fruits will be the fruits of the summer. And the um, the recipes are all built on, on, a, on a custard base. Mm -hmm. uh, I have five custard bases. Five custom bases that are different uh, flavors mm -hmm. that'll that'll kind of serve as the um, the foundation for whatever's going in it. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you eat ice cream, you have to have a you have to have a layer of sweet. You have to have that cold, and then you have to have that cruncher, that bite. Yes, and you have to have it in such a way that the cold doesn't dissipate the flavor. So right. I spend a lot of time sourcing um, high quality ingredients and mm -hmm. using them in my ice, in my ice cream. So we talked about the different levels of the standards uh, for ice cream, and we talked about the standard, the premium, the super premium, and the ultra premium. But what I like about it is you chose to be at the apex of this ladder at the tier. You're you're at the ultra premium level. I believe in full fat, full sugar. Okay, I do too. When you say it again, <laughs> I mean just <laughs> when you're eating ice cream, full fat, full sugar. That's just uh -huh. me. Um, but, Whether you eat ice cream or not, <laughs> just give me all the fat and all the sugar. Don't hold anything back. It, in moderation, in moderation, okay. of course. But yes, there are levels to ice cream. And mm -hmm. what you'll find in the grocery stores are usually standard to yes. premium. Uh -huh. uh, and what, what that means uh, is butterfat content, the percentage yeah. of butterfat mm -hmm. in an ice cream determines its level. Right. So standard ice cream is is 10% butterfat or less. Mm -hmm. uh, and premium is between 10 and 14. And then uh, 14 to 16 is premium mm -hmm. and then usually 17 18 is ultra premium yeah you don't want to get too high high fat or else you're going to be creating butter mm. but you don't want to be too low where it you have ice milk or mm -hmm. when you you know you, you you eat your ice cream and it's melted before you can actually finish it and you right. have to eat it very very quickly right so i believe that premium and, and ultra, super premium and ultra premium ice cream make for the best ice cream so that's what i focused on wow so my ice cream would compare to Brands such as Jenny's, yes, uh, or Morgan Stearns in New York, or uh, McConnell's out in California makes a great premium ice cream. Yeah, um, those are the brands that I look to uh, when I say how do I, how would I like for this brand to grow? Yes, those are the models, those are the templates. So it's kind of like top shelf. Correct. Correct. Okay. I like that. I like the level of uh, expertise and the research and the level of uh, intense study that you have put into this ice cream brand like you wanted to take advantage of every aspect of our palate yes and you wanted to take advantage of every aspect of the butter content i absolutely believe in full fat full sugar and, i know you and do i i also believe in organic so for me i source as, as much organic product as possible mm -hmm. uh particularly in the dairy uh, and dairy is one of the most highly regulated industries in the state, if not mm -hmm. the country. And uh, to handle dairy in a retail or wholesale manner, you, you, it does require a certain set of uh, licenses and permits. Mm -hmm. And so I've done all that. And, 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 and that was part of my two years of research and development. And, um, and I started to produce product that was that is tested in the lab every yeah. month. So every month, the state of Texas comes to my kitchen. They take samples. They test my wow. equipment. To make sure it uh, meets meets the standard, they and I that? get a result, mm -hmm. and the result is public. Because why is that important? Because there was a certain company in Brenham that had a very big listeria scare several years ago. If you recall that, <laughs> a certain company a certain in Brenham. Company in Brenham. <laughs> And <laughs> okay, big company, and I can only aspire to be as big as they. Mm -hmm. However, you know, if you're not careful in, in the handling of dairy, you can create problems that'll make people sick. Right. And so that is why it's highly regulated. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's worth every minute of uh, testing and and uh, and work that I had to do to get that license and, and to be licensed in the state of Texas is pretty important. Okay. So my pineapple butter cake. Pineapple butter cake. Okay. So Which if anybody's spoon? visited my. This is your pineapple spoon right here. Okay. If anybody's visited my website, you'll see that uh, every one of my products has a story because mm -hmm. I believe that food is story as, mm -hmm. as much as I believe that food is, is love. So pineapple butter cake, it's one of those uh, memories of mine that you growing up with my grandmother in the church kitchen, she was always the head mm -hmm. cook. Mm -hmm. There was always the main table and the food and the, and the steam table line, but there was always this dessert table. And inevitably, on, on any big Sunday Woo. dinners, there would be a pineapple upside down this cake. This is just and fun. For nah, me, no. I mean, you. <laughs> so that is my version of the uh, Southern uh, pineapple upside down cake. Yes. It is a pineapple uh, ice cream. 
mm. um, with uh, caramelized uh, pineapples, mm-hmm. um, pineapple butter cake. And I believe that the butter cake is the simplest, most effective way to transmit mm. not only uh, 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 richness, but also uh, any type of fruit additive in a cake. A butter cake is delicious. You probably had a butter cake at your favorite steakhouse. I do. Everyone's selling butter cakes mm. now. Um, but that's a pineapple butter cake. So it's oh, flavored. Um, and then there's a hint of um, cherry. maraschino cherry swirl because generally when you see a mm. pineapple, when you see a pineapple upside down cake, there mm. are the pineapple rings, and mm. then you someone will put one of those cherries in the middle of the pineapple ring. But mm. nevertheless, it's been one of my favorite desserts, and so I turned it into an ice cream. Caramelized in brown sugar and butter. Brown sugar, granulated sugar, butter, and a hint of vanilla and a hint of lemon juice, and you just cook them until they're nice and and soft and and caramely. And uh, they make, it's a great topping. It's a great add-in. It's a uh, caramelized pineapples are the best. Oh my God! Yes, they. How great thou art! Because <laughs> I, I just when I tell you these ice cream flavors, I don't think I even need food. I mean, a real meal anymore. If I could kind of sit in my life well, around I this, have to get your nourishment. I know you what you're saying, but at least for a week, I think I could do the ice cream. And just I, I would be content. It's one of my favorites, and my kids absolutely love that. So they gave mm. me a challenge. Did they? Um, yes, they did. They had found a uh, pineapple ice cream in the supermarket. Now, mind you, my children are foodies, mm-hmm. just like I am. So they have very well developed palates. And oh. so they are they've tried every ice cream brand, and they always tell me if they find something that, hey mom, this is really interesting, you might want to take a look at it. They challenged me with a with a pineapple uh pineapple recipe mm-hmm. and so uh i had to meet the challenge and i think i did you had to mm-hmm. absolutely oh they challenged you with what they, they found correct they said can okay. you do better than this one because we we can't find any other pineapple pineapple ice cream that that's as good as this one so well, the concept was always to do a pineapple ice cream just how are we going to execute mm. we could have gone you know a totally different direction but the do upside work, down cake was the way to go. Do you work out at the gym or anything? <laughs> I mean, I work out every day being a mom, a wife, and, oh, yeah. and an executive. No, I, I'm a walker. I get up in the morning and I walk with oh, my dog. And okay. I used to be a, a pretty serious gym rat, but yeah. I need to return. Is this a vanilla? Uh, that's the vanilla spoon. That's a pineapple. I just tell you the truth. I mean, I. <laughs> now, if you. <laughs> Do this. I would like to. I, I want you before we started, everyone. Judith said, Okay, I gotta just try one. I'm just gonna try one. And she ended up trying all four. So I, I said, Judith, you have to share this with the audience. They're gonna want to know. Lord, thank you. I mean, I didn't know that I could get this much joy out of eating ice cream, but I am getting, I think it's your love. The way you want to educate, it's you're tickling my fancy because see, you're stimulating my intellect with the background mm-hmm. knowledge and the scientific data and the you know and the, the chemistry and all of this and the stories. See, and that's stimulating my brain. And then you're backing up all of this hardcore research with this product. Something really delicious. And it's just and that's the whole point. I'm, I'm having a rush. It's sensory. You. It is absolutely that. And, and you're touching on a lot absolutely. of my senses. That's why I think I'm feeling this way. Well, and also because of our history, and I spend a lot of time uh, <clears throat> explaining to to, to customers mm-hmm. online and in person, you right. know, what's in it. Because yes. people are very health conscious. People yes. want to know what's in their ice cream. So you will see on my ingredient label uh-huh. uh, products and names of things that you recognize. Yes. Um, don't use uh, any preservatives or additives. Mm-hmm. Um, it is... A, my ice cream does have a shelf life. If after opened, it'll probably last you about a good two months. And that's what mm-hmm. it should last you. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's unopened, it'll last you four months. Wow. After four months, I tend to see a little bit of flavor degradation. You mm-hmm. might not, but okay. I don't like to have it on the shelf past that. So mm-hmm. ice cream really is not meant to be in your, your freezer forever. And sometimes mm-hmm. people keep ice cream forever. And if your ice cream is kept forever, then it's probably not the best ice cream that no. you could have bought. But I don't think I don't think it would last in my house forever. Because I normally don't always eat the ice cream. I buy it for others, and they eat it up quickly. But if yours was in there, I mean, I would be eating it, and others would be eating it. Would you have to hide it, you think? I think mm, probably would. I have hiders. I have a a group of hiders in my customer base that say, you know, I I get the ice cream. I have to hide it from my wife, hide it from my husband. Because I don't eat quickly. Right. And it's not like I'll put it up there, and I say, I'm going to wait in my mind because I got time. Right. But when you have other people living in there, you, you realize you don't have time. Because they'll go in there and see it, and they'll start grabbing and eating it. Correct. 
correct. Quickly. I want to wait a little bit. <laughs> Learn to appreciate this. This is fine ice. You know, wait. It's an honor to even have it in your freezer, you know. Well, thank so you. just wait a minute. Thank but no, they're not waiting. They're they're going to dig they're right gonna, in. They're going to dig right in. So I've had the vintage vanilla. So define vintage. Vintage means? Vintage, for me, vintage means classic. It means a uh, throwback. It means yes. something from the past. It means, right. it means something from the past that you cherish. And because mm -hmm. this this uh, particular flavor is based on my grandmother's recipe, I've called it vintage vanilla. Yes. Um, some folks uh, in my, on my team want me to call it 1848 vanilla, and I okay. probably would call it that, but the recipe will not change. Okay. But the, it'll always be something that's on the menu. Okay. I like that. Vintage vanilla, and then I got my pineapple butter cake. I understand that because grandma was over the kitchen. She was one the of church those. Yes, she kitchen, was. And they always had the pineapple upside down. But cake that's just it. a memory for me. And it was one, it was a big dessert table. Yes. So that was one of the desserts <laughs> that I always focused in on. So is that grandma's name? This is great grandma's name. So great my grandmother's grandma. name is Annie Rebecca. Okay. Annie Rebecca. Uh, her mother was Petra Lee. Petra Lee. Okay. So this is my great grandmother. Petra Lee. And if you look on my website, there's a picture of my grandmother mm -hmm. and my great grandmother. I think I saw it. And um, many people think I look the exactly like mm -hmm. my, uh, my great grandmother. So here we are. So we've gone from the vintage van vanilla. And we talked about Edmund Alvius, right? Mm -hmm. And we have given him credit for cultivating and refining the. Uh, the pollinization process for that vanilla bean, mm -hmm. hand pollinization. Yes. We th we thank him for that. We do. And then we go on down. Anybody eating vanilla should thank him every day for I, that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you right Sorry, now, I appreciate Lee. you. And <clears throat> we have Aunt Sally's Strawberry Shortcake. Yes, it's a favorite. It's a, it is a fan favorite. Yes, and when we think about Sally, this is your Starburst. When we were little, we mm -hmm. we did little Sally Walker sitting on the saucer, and all that ride Sally ride. Well, we weren't thinking about this Sally, no, because there actually was a slave named Sally. Sally Shad. Sally so Shad. The story of Sally Shad is uh, Sally Shad again, a slave in Delaware. She mm -hmm. um, worked uh, in a her family um, who were freedmen. <clears throat> they had a uh, catering company. And so uh, it was she who created strawberry ice cream, the first strawberry ice cream by using wow. a, a mixture of strawberries, snow, and milk. First strawberry and ice cream. And it was sold in the, in their in the corner store. They had mm -hmm. like a deli, like a sandwich shop. Mm -hmm. And um, the ice cream uh, was so popular and so well known that Dolly mm -hmm. Madison, James Madison's wife, President James Madison's wife, mm -hmm. took a train to Delaware and wanted to meet the person who created this delicious concoction. Right. So she uh, did travel to Delaware and brought Sally Shad back to the White House and put her in the White House kitchen. And she mm -hmm. actually served Sally's strawberry ice cream at James Madison's inaugural ball. Wow. So she is also one of those great heroines of culinary, um, of, of our culinary history yes. and of ice cream history. Um, and so Sally Shad uh, is the reason that I created uh, Aunt Sally's Strawberry Shortcake. So I have created a strawberry ice cream there with the vanilla gin wash sponge cake. Hmm. And because I love mixing savory and sweet, yeah. it's a strawberry balsamic caramel. Hmm. So this vanilla gin wash sponge cake. Correct. What makes this so unique? This gin wash, it's. Lighter? Well, it is uh, lighter, uh -huh. and, it, it, and it absorbs uh, the flavor that it's that it's att attached to. Yes. So the Genoise sponge cake is is lightly uh, lightly brushed with strawberry liqueur, mm -hmm. which deepens the strawberry flavor, and it also gives it um, uh, a, a warmth. Mm. And uh, Genoise sponge cake is a cake made of mostly eggs that are whipped, 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 whipped. Uh, egg yolks that are highly whipped, a tiny bit of flour, a, mm. a little bit of sugar, and maybe some vanilla, and you bake it. So it's meant to be very light and fluffy. This is and very so delicious. it makes for a great additive to um, this particular recipe because, again, it is the cake is kind of soaked in a, a little bit of strawberry liqueur. I heard you say that. So you you say you lightly you brush it. I brush it with a strawberry brush. liqueur. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. The liqueur. Correct. Everything is so French and so. Refined here, Genoise. So then you say you also, okay, because you like sweet and savory. So you mix I it. I do. The strawberry balsamic. It's balsamic vinegar, strawberries, and uh, a lot of sugar. 
that is cooked very slowly until it becomes caramel. Mm. And so, you know, you get the consistency of a caramel, but you get a very bright strawberry and uh, with vinegar mixed in. So it's a perfect mm. cut to the sweet of the ice cream and the, and the liqueur of the cake. This is just beautiful. It's a, a fan favorite. Everybody, he was, we often sell out a strawberry shortcake at uh, sure. where we vend, and uh, it is a popular flavor. So that's why I brought it for you today. Oh, well, I, you know what? I am so appreciative. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am truly grateful. I mean, down in my Thank heart, you. down in my soul, I'm grateful that you brought these flavors in today. So you say you want to engage every aspect of the palate with I the do. sweet and savory. I do. And I do appreciate Miss Sally Shad for her contribution. Again, another uh, little known black history fact that Absolutely. Sally Shad invented strawberry strawberry ice cream. Ice cream. And Edmund Albers refined. I just He's responsible for inventing the hand pollinization of the vanilla bean orchid. Uh, so, you know, we just had National Ice Cream Day last Sunday. Right, I saw that. And that was something that was deemed a holiday by, holiday by President Reagan mm -hmm. and uh and for many reasons, you can read the proclamation. But what mm -hmm. I found interesting in that proclamation was I didn't see a tie back to these sort of milestones. And maybe mm -hmm. I didn't get the right version of it, but it, it that's OK. That's OK. That's why I'm here. That's mm -hmm. that's why I'm here to tell those stories. And I think, you know, for those of us who are foodies and as well as historians, this mm -hmm. is very important um, information. But but for those of us who um, just are are aware of food culture mm -hmm. and food ways and I wonder where this came from and how did we get to this point yeah. um, and the imprint that um, our foremothers and forefathers had mm -hmm. on, on the culinary aspects in America. Um, you can't help but celebrate that and say thank you. I mean, celebrity chefs are a dime a dozen today, but if you think about it, mm -hmm. um, our, the first American celebrity chef, I believe, was Sally, was James Hemings, Sally Hemings' brother, okay. who worked for President Jefferson. What is it? And he was trained in France, and and uh, and he he produced world class meals for Thomas Jefferson, and he was world renowned because of that. Wow! So you know, we can. I would like to say we could take credit for being the first celebrity, putting the whole celebrity. We were being celebrity <laughs> chefs before being celebrity chefs was cool. was a thing. Huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm just, I'm just touched. And you mentioned earlier while we were talking prior to the start of the show, mm -hmm. that we also invented the ice cream dipper or the ice cream scoop. Alfred Kral, C-R-A-L-L-E. Oh, uh, yes, he actually holds, he's an African-American man who holds the patent for the ice cream dipper. Holds so the, the patent. Absolutely. The thing that you'll go to a scoop shop and see them dipping, mm -hmm. the tool, yeah. he invented that. Isn't that amazing? He called it the uh, the molden dasher. The molden so, dasher. So again, uh, our, our culinary contributions to this uh, particular product My Lord. are mighty and great. This is an educational show here. It's I a mean, food show too. Yeah, it's a food show. It's a documentary on ice cream. But I'm loving it because I like the way you keep slipping in these little golden nuggets about the inventions and the... Well, I don't want to produce a... I don't produce a recipe that doesn't have a story attached to it, that doesn't okay. have a meaning attached to it, that okay. doesn't have something that connects either to my culinary history or our collective culinary history in the diaspora. So okay. um, I spend a great amount of time researching and, and planning for mm -hmm. what I'm going to put on the menu because mm -hmm. I want to make sure to get it right. Right. I want to make sure if I can't go to the place where the, where the food way or the recipe started, mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out and use every resource I have to find out about it mm -hmm. or to acquire or to acquire <clears throat> a menu item that makes sense. And for example, I'll give you a really great mm -hmm. example right here in Texas. Um, there is a there's a, 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 a an item called an African beignet. It's actually called a mandazi. Have you seen mm -hmm. these in Central Market? No. Okay, so I, I love Central Market. It's a great uh, store here in mm -hmm. Texas, a grocery store. Anyway, um, the African beignet is like a street food. It's called mandazi. It's a mm -hmm. little square. It's yeah. chewy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. Mm -hmm. Nothing like the one that we're the ones that we're used to. From Louisiana. Um, when I found this product, I absolutely fell in love with it, and I had to find a way to use it. And I reached out to the maker of this product. Her, okay. uh, it's a woman in um, in Dallas, so it's a company called Yatab Mandazi, mm -hmm. and um, it's something that she, her, her foremothers also taught to her because they sold these at markets. They were street foods at places mm -hmm. like Uganda, Kenya, East Africa, and they were street foods. So they sold these 
uh, items to mm. help make ends meet in their home. So of mm -hmm. course I immediately was attracted to that story. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to her, we had a great conversation and I said, I want to use your product in one of my, in my, uh, in my ice cream. Yeah. So I, I uh, started testing it out and I, I just launched a, uh, a, a new flavor called Mocha Mandazi, which is a coffee, Colombian coffee ice cream mm -hmm. with her beignets and uh, dark chocolate ganache uh, swirl. Mm -hmm. And we're selling that, we're scooping that at the Memorial Villages Farmer's Market uh, this Saturday. Oh, are you? You can Wonderful. also order it online, but if you want to come get a live scoop, come out to the Memorial Villages Farmer's Market, mm -hmm. which is uh, from 8.30 to 1 p.m. every Saturday really in Memorial Villages. But because of her story and her product, and she too brought her uh, product to market through mm -hmm. small business, mm -hmm. through farmer's markets, through selling um, mm -hmm. direct to consumers. Yeah, I like that. Um, we we bonded immediately and hopefully we'll work together on something else. Oh, I'm excited about that. That's going to be phenomenal. I don't know why, but I see you having a restaurant or something one day where I'm going to be able to come in and sit down. I don't know what food is in here. It's going to be something more than desserts, but I don't know what else is in there. I know those. I know it's going to be some butter cakes, and it's going to be some pineapple upside down cake, and something, and some ice cream. And I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what your specialty is at home. Well, my vision for Patrolee's Kitchen, it, it, it is a specialty foods company. The okay. 1848 ice cream brand is a mm. brand of that company, and yeah. I, I have. I have the, the vision to even have two additional extensions for the ice cream brand. One that's mm -hmm. a uh, um, more of a, uh, a, a custom flavors brand yes. that I could, that someone just wants me to make a flavor just for them or just mm -hmm. for their event, something right. that they can't find in stores or online or anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then um, a all chocolate brand mm -hmm. as well as a uh, boozy brand. I want to do uh, a, a, a boozy brand that has alcohol or wines wow, or nice. things like that. So I'm testing some of those things out now. I have a couple of items in my sorbets that do have mm -hmm. alcohol in them. They're all 5% or below. So mm -hmm. uh, you have to eat a whole lot to get <laughs> to get any sort of buzz. But okay. I use them mainly for flavor. So mm -hmm. um, I do plan on extending um, Patrulli's Kitchen out into a, the fullness of a specialty foods uh, brand. I don't know exactly what that'll look like. I'm mm. leaving that up to God. But I know that... Uh, the foundation is in place for me to do that. Hmm. I like the way you go back to God and you go back to the church and the church kitchen. So what type of church was that? It was a Baptist church. Okay. It is a Baptist church. It, it still is still there. Yes. Oh, they just, I was raised they just Baptist. celebrated a big anniversary recently. I believe it was a hundred and hundred and thirty-five years. Wow, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I see that brown butter pecan. I guess I'll Yes, butter pecan. This is your butter pecan spoon. So <clears throat> butter pecan is just a classic ice cream parlor flavor. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I my, my my brand is classic ice cream parlor flavors as well as flavors that represent the diaspora. And, and butter pecan has been, you know, a fan favorite since mm -hmm. the very beginning of butter pecan, particularly in our community. Mm -hmm. So what I have done is I have made a brown butter pecan. So I brown the butter uh, and, and which creates a more nutty flavor. You brown the butter, okay. Uh, and then I add it into the into the mix. And then I also added in um, my own butter pecan cookies recipe. Oh Lord, okay, yeah. <laughs> I've been into the cookie, I think. Delicioso. Thank you. I'm talking about phenomenal. Thank you. Fantabulous, beautiful. I mean, this is just magnifico. Thank you. So it takes, that's again, a, a popular flavor, but I brought it because I thought you would like it. Yeah. And um, I wanted to show how butter pecan can be done a little bit differently than what you're probably used to. Mm -hmm. I do get butter pecan when I go places sometimes. I get a chocolate mm -hmm. and I get a butter pecan scoop for some reason. It's a popular scoop. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Many scoop shops have a butter pecan. Okay. And I know that it is a uh, one of those classic flavors. My aunt loves butter pecan and uh, because she loves anything with nuts in it. And I often get requests to put more stuff, more stuff. <laughs> Can we have more nuts? Can we have more cookies? Can we have more stuff? Um, people like to have a crunch or, or a cake or a cookie in their ice cream. I don't like when I order a uh, butter pecan and there are no pecans. Isn't that frustrating? Yeah, like barely a little speckle here and there. You, that... you get a skin from the pecan. It's, it's not really the pecan. I've had that ice cream before. Yeah. I you like probably to. paid a good 10 or $12 for it at the mm -hmm. supermarket. Now, that's a big cookie chunk. I don't think, I don't know if anybody can see that. 
I don't know if they can either. You're not going to show is, them? Is that a cookie? I'm about to. <laughs> I thought about eating it. I know I, I caught what you wanted me to do. <laughs> no, that is a big cookie. And I was just yeah. wondering, do I have enough self-control and restraint? Nobody can see this I don't cookie. think they'll be able to see it. Let me see. If you order the, if you order the brown butter this pecan, is a piece you'll, of cookies, you'll, see you'll see the cookies. You'll see the cookies. The camera's up there. Right there. Yeah, they That's can't the see the cookie. I don't think they can no, see they can. That's okay. Mm. This is amazing. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Hope I don't pop out of my clothes here. But if I do, that's all right. <laughs> people like people that are flawed. They don't like perfect people. Nobody likes perfect people. I'm they want you to I'm eat. certainly not in the perfect club. Yeah, they want you to eat and pop out of your clothes and show the struggle you yeah, have. Yeah, they want to see weight. the fall down, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad you enjoy it. And if you, anybody wants to uh, find out more about the product, uh -huh. order, place an order at plk1848.com. Yeah. plk1848.com. Um, you can see everything that's currently on the menu uh, for this season. Mm -hmm. um, the menu changes often, uh, generally with the seasons. Uh, and there are some non-dairy uh, selections. Uh, oh, really? Certainly, there are folks out who uh, can't tolerate. Yeah, can't tolerate the dairy. Uh, I don't necessarily call them vegan ice cream or mm -hmm. nice cream, mm -hmm. um, but they are fruit based. Fruit so based. Uh, I, I believe those make the best uh, non-dairy flavors. Well, I am I am thoroughly impressed with your line of ultra premium ice cream. Thank you. Which I have learned has a 16, 16 and, to 18 percent butterfat content. Yes, yeah, 16 to 18 percent butterfat. And I am forever grateful for that level of butterfat. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I am, you know, you know how you don't know in right. life where your blessings are going or right. you might not understand. Yeah. The level. But you can taste the difference. Yes, that's what I'm yeah. trying to say. But I can taste the level and intensity of the blessing of butterfat in this ice cream. There is a difference. Yes. There is a difference. Yes. And it's not nothing that I know that I will be able to do every day. You know, especially if I'm trying to maintain a certain weight. But probably not the best product. No, had. it's probably not. But that's it's okay. A treat. It's a treat. And it's a gift because you can also send it as a gift. I have gift cards on my website. So if you want to give somebody yeah. um, a, a four-pack of uh, Petra Lee's ice cream, you can certainly do that online as well. Oh, Petra Lee. Thank yes. you, Petra. And thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. But I want to say, I don't know why I'm going back to the other line mm -hmm. of, uh, I know it's, it's a specialty line. Mm -hmm. And eventually you might sell a cookie or something, but. Eventually. I mean, everything that I, all of the add-ins, all of my inclusions, the cakes, the cookies, the bites, I eventually want to sell individually. Mm -hmm. So if someone, you know, does want to have some butter pecan cookies, I, I want to get to the point of being able to package okay. and sell those as well. And the pineapple. Mm -hmm. And the pineapple okay. butter cakes. I do get requests for my butter cakes, but not as often as the ice cream. So, mm -hmm. uh, of course, I don't promote those things. Now I'm talking about them, but nevertheless, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they eventually will be on the menu as well. Okay. Well, maybe if I pray hard enough or I just call I'll make enough. you one. Yeah, it can happen. It can happen. I mean, <laughs> it can so happen. It That's what so I'm happen. saying. Yes, I, it can. I believe. I have faith. Yes. It can happen. And so, so we've talked about the level of butter fat and we've talked about your add-ins mm -hmm. and your strawberry shortcake with your vanilla gingerbread, uh sponge cake, et cetera, et cetera. Now, 20 flavors. Yes. I currently have that is a lot flavors. of flavors. That is a lot. Um, for a small business such as mine, that is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, not all 20 are on the website because, right. again, uh, they're seasonal. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I will always have in rotation at least that, that many. I started mm -hmm. with 12. Okay. So I've since I've since expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, and I'm not trying to be Baskin Robbins. That's not what I do. Right. Um, there's a the, the type of products that I create. Um, do require a, a different type of approach and a different type of a different level of ingredient. So mm -hmm. it, it's not 33 flavors of everything like bubble gum to popcorn. That's not mm -hmm. what I do. What? I will I will focus on classic flavors and mm -hmm. I will focus on things that could be a whole that could be considered a whole and complete dessert. Why? So for me, it's focusing on those things that are really delicious and again tying it back to mm -hmm. an ingredient or an, a recipe that uh, that has a story and comes from the diaspora. Well, the diaspora. I can tell that this diaspora could get me into a little bit of trouble if I don't control myself. But <laughs> sometimes you have to have a bite of ice cream to I know. feel better. I'm grateful. 
So I'm just honored to have had you today. It's already 824. But I just want to go back and highlight again, Rebecca Dirt and Swindle, hailing from the state of West Virginia, wife. She's a boy mom of twin boys. She is a technology executive, an entrepreneur. She's the founder and CEO of PLK 1848 ice cream brand. Yes, I am. It's Thank a very you. impressive brand. And that PLK stands for Petra Lee's Kitchen which was her great grandmother, right? Great, 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 mm -hmm. great, great grandmother. Mm -hmm. And your name is Rebecca, but was that your grandmother's name? You said correct. My my grandmother's was was Annie Rebecca, and I'm named after her. Oh, Annie Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And so today here in the studio, I have tasted vintage vanilla. Shout out to Edmund Albius. I've tasted butter pecan, brown butter, brown pecan. butter pecan. I saw the brown cookies. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't let me omit the brown, brown <laughs> butter pecan. Yes. With the roasted salted pecan and butter pecan cookies. Mm -hmm. I love the add-ons. And the pineapple butter cake, which has some pineapple butter cake in it, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is reminiscent of the traditional Southern pineapple upside down cake. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have unsally strawberry shortcake. That's with the, I know, with the gingois, how do we pronounce it? Gingois sponge. Yeah. You got it. The vanilla... <laughs> You got it. You got it that time. That's because I like food. <laughs> it's easy for me to get because I like food. Good food. Exactly. Vanilla exactly. genoise sponge cake, the lighter, fluffier uh, side of the sponge cake where you whip. You say you whip the yolks. It's all egg and just, yolks and, and, and just a little bit it. of flour. Yes. Uh, a little bit of flour. Mm -hmm. And then she says she brushes it with the pastry brush. With, with the, the strawberry, strawberry liqueur. liqueur. And we have the strawberry balsamic uh, caramel. Oh, what was that? You put that. Oh, you caramelized the. What did you do with the strawberries? Well, the stra the, the, the strawberry cake has a uh, liqueur on it. It also has the homemade strawberry jam. I forgot to add that. That's kind of rolled into oh. it as well, so you get a bite of strawberries. And then the straw and then the the savory part mm -hmm. is the strawberry balsamic caramel. Oh, okay. Yes, I wrote that down because you're engaging every aspect of our palate. I, I just think things taste better if you can mix the salt with the sweet and the and uh -huh. the savory with the sweet and or the right. or the unctuous with the savory. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think you get the most sensory perception when you have those every every aspect of your palate engaged. Right. And because I'm a foodie, that's kind of what I look for when I go eat mm -hmm. anywhere. And so going back to Aunt Sally, uh, we have to acknowledge yes. Sally Shad, who was the inventor of strawberry ice cream mm -hmm. and who served the ice cream at the inauguration of James Madison. James Madison. This is phenomenal. And then we have to also shout out Alfred Crawl, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Who invented the ice cream scoop. Correct. What would we do without you? We wouldn't be serving it with that scoop. Right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> he made our life so much easier. Yes, he did. So how do people find you if they want to get in touch one more time? PLK1848.com is the mm -hmm. website, and right. as well as all the socials. Mm -hmm. um, you can order from the website uh, the products directly. You could certainly order with uh, order a gift card if you want to send mm -hmm. uh, ice cream as a gift. You can also find us every Saturday at the Memorial Village's Farmer's Market um, from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Every Saturday we're there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that market's been around for quite a long time. Highly curated market. I mm. recommend it. You can mm. get a lot of really delicious things there. Fresh eggs, fresh meats. It's just a garden. Mm. The, the produce is outstanding. Wow. Um, and it is um, a very stable market. It's been, mm. it's, they celebrated 350 markets, I believe, two Saturdays ago. So wow. please come check me out if you want to get a fresh scoop. On Saturday, bring your bring your kids to the more to the Memorial Village's farmers market. There's a playground, there are mm -hmm. facilities on site, mm -hmm. a lot of shade trees. There's always music mm -hmm. um, and entertainment. There's a stage, so uh, please come out if you want to get yourself a scoop uh, or, or get yourself a pint on Saturdays. That's how you can find us, and of course on all the socials. Please uh, log in. Uh, uh, please sign up to receive emails so you can know about the new flavor drops and all the good stuff that's flavor happening. Drops. And uh, I look forward to meeting you. This is phenomenal. What do you say to the woman that's watching and she's afraid to launch into the deep or to step out and try something new? I would say uh, it's, you never, <laughs> it's never too late. Okay? Right. It's never I, too late. You know, I have been, I've been working uh, quite a many years and I'm certainly not in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, however, I have always had a dream and a passion to, to do something that would um, 
leave a legacy not only for myself but also for my children. Right. I want to have something to leave behind, and working for someone else is not the way to do that. Right. And so I would say, uh, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Push through it. Do all your homework. Yes. Uh, understand your product. Spend a lot of time developing your your why. Mm -hmm. Know what your why is. Know what your purpose is. That's the that's the one thing that's going to get you out of bed every day and make you excited to to face mm -hmm. to face whatever you have to face. Yes. And um, certainly pray and pray and pray and pray. Yes. Um, because when you're operating in your gift, it's really true. Uh, when you're operating in your gift, doors will open and your gift mm -hmm. will make room for you. Wow. Is that not a beautiful way to end? That your gift will make Absolutely. room for you. Living on purpose. Yes, I love it. You know what? My gift has truly made room for me because, because I stepped out on faith and I started this podcast. I've met so many phenomenal guests like yourself. And I'm telling you, this particular episode will be one of my most memorable episodes because I learned so much. I'm telling you, you stimulated you. my intellect with all of this background knowledge about this journey, this ice cream journey, this phenomenon. Thank you. I mean, little known facts. I'm just so amazed and mesmerized by how much we as a people contribute to, I mean, the lifelong legacy of ice cream. And culinary I mean, arts. And culinary arts. I mean, who knew? Absolutely. And so with that, I want everyone to know that I would love for them to have a phenomenal weekend. However, I don't have any way of ending the broadcast. I just, <laughs> because the guy took, he took everything from me. But her son, look at this. The My N son is here. The NYU student is in the house. <laughs> He's walking value. over. And thank you with that. Toodles, oodles, and goodles, and noodles. And thank have you. a wonderful 